Hey YouTube, welcome back. If you have not subscribed and you're here not for the first time, just go ahead and subscribe. Just do it. It's free. Click like if you like the shenanigans. <laughs> Click like if you like that I do consider myself a troll. A cute troll when I put on face paint, but a troll nonetheless. I mean, I, I own my junk. So, you know, thumbs up and click like for that. Hey, you got... <coughs> This video was about the necessity of beta readers. Um, a lot of you may not know that I do write, um, more so since I retired from the clinical field, so it's been really great to get back to doing something that I enjoyed doing. Yes, I did enjoy clinical work. Um, I used to write when I was an adolescent, mostly poetry. Um, I did some pro prose, P-R-O-S-E. Um, and I know I said that funny. I'm weird that way. That's part of the crazy and TCTN. But anyway. <laughs> I started taking my writing more seriously since I retired from the clinical field because I'm able to devote time to it and to doing articles and also short stories, flash fiction pieces, and also polishing up the formatting of poetry I've written when I was younger. I have stuff going back to like 1984. A lot of stuff I did lose because I moved around a lot, but it surprised me to find as much as I did, so much so that eventually... <laughs> I'm going to publish it as a poetry slash prose collection. Right now, though, I'm focusing on um, a memoir of the first 25, 26 years of my life. I am 50 now, and so there is a huge gap. And I may do a second one on the second quarter of my life, from my mid 20s until now, which I'm 50. So, but I'm not sure. I am leaning. I am leaning more and more towards doing that. Uh, right now, though, I am focusing on polishing up the memoir that I have. And any book that's written, once you write it, is called a manuscript. And so from now on, when I say manuscript, I'll be referring to my memoir, which is a book. This video, the purpose of and the necessity of beta readers. A beta reader is a person who reads your manuscript for story flow, character development, um helps you determine if there's potholes in your story, if there's things that don't quite fit, or things that are just not clear. And they do suggest that when you solicit beta readers, if someone does come to you and say, I'm interested in reading your manuscript, that you do have specific things that you want them to address. And so, and I meant to type it out, well, print it out because it is typed, but I forgot to bring it over here with me to do the video. Uh, one of the things I wanted them to focus on was, the, does the story flow? Is it a continuum? Are there things that you read and you're like, why is this here? Or this doesn't really fit here. Um, I asked, were you emotionally invested in the story? Why or why not? Because if they say yes or no, you don't know why or why not. And it's the why or why not that will help you um, to build up the story to elicit emotion and also the investment that a person has into the story and into the characters. It being a memoir, the character is me. And you guys who watch my channel, you know I am a character. So, <laughs> um, Another question I asked was, were they able to relate to the story? Why or why not? And there were like two other questions. I think there were five things. And I also asked if you're not going to finish reading it for whatever reason, let me know as soon as possible. And I also asked for feedback in about two weeks because I didn't want to go months and months wondering, okay, is this person ever going to send me their feedback? Um, there also are trigger warnings that um, I disclosed up front. Um, parental neglect, um, there's teenage sexual activities and drug use and underage drinking, um, mental health things were going on. And so if there's something that is even remotely possible to trigger someone you let the beta reader know up front and that's also, also you do that in your solicitation so that people can make an informed decision on whether or not they even want to read your book because some people won't want to read that um because it may tr trigger them and also there's spiritual elements in my book there's also profanity in the book and so those are all things i said okay there's this 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 is a blurb of the story Please let me know if you're interested in beta, beta reading my story. And so there were four people from a Facebook group who um, contacted me to, to beta read it, which was great. And I asked two people that I know, I personally know, 
and we have such a good friendship, I knew that they would be honest and they would be able to read this story without just saying, oh my gosh, I feel so sorry, like all this stuff happened. And that's another thing, another thing that I ask for the beta readers is to be brutally honest. I'm not easily offended. If the story sucks, just tell me it sucks, but please explain why so that I can go back and fix it. And I will say all the feedback I received, um, everyone was brutally honest. And the reason I wanted um, at least six or seven beta readers is because I was going to do the editing based on democracy. If there were, you know, two or three people who said the same thing, okay, that's something I really need to pay attention to. If one person says something, it's just like, okay, that's one person's opinion. But if you have three or four people telling you the same exact thing, even if it's in different ways, then that's something you really need to hone in on and improve on. Um, the first feedback I received was that my ending was weak. My manuscript is considered a novelette based on word count. It's only about 70,000 words, which a full-blown novel is anywhere from 100,000 words to 120,000 words, and some even more than that. And so I know it's not a full-blown novel based on it's only 25 years of my life. And maybe like the first 60 pages or 65 pages is like all this horrible stuff with just a couple tidbits of, you know, sunshine that peek through. And then the last five pages, it's like, okay, this is good stuff now and the book is over. And so... <laughs> When he explained it to me, he said, I know there's so much more to this story. And I'm thinking, like, you know what it really is. And I think at that point, I was just ready for the story to be written and to be done with it. Because I'm used to writing short stories. You get in, you get out. Short stories are 10,000 words or less. And here I am with this 70,000 word story that I have to keep going back to and going back to. And, um... <laughs> and so I knew... So I knew... And his feedback was awesome. So I knew, like, okay, yeah, I do need to balance out the story at least have it even between the not so good stuff and then the great stuff and the second person said the same thing in a different way and then the third person said the same thing I'm like you know what and I didn't tell one person what the other had said and I actually waited until I received feedback from five people to sit down and compile it into a list of what I need to work on what I need to improve and where I need to elaborate and where I need to add in more details and things like that and so it's been a good experience and beta readers, their purpose is to help you by way of their feedback for you to figure out what you can improve on and how essentially to make your story better. And when you think of beta readers, it's like when there's a new program that comes out, it's a beta project. They're just putting it out there to see what the feedback is so that they can make it better. The same thing with beta readers. They're agreeing to read it for the purpose of trying it out and letting you know how they feel about it. So that's basically what it is. And so it is important to ask specific questions, what you would like them to focus on. Beta readers are not editors. If they want to edit, they can do that. But I do say up front, you know, these are the main things I would like you to, to think about while you're reading it and to let me know what your comments are on those things. Editing, you hire an editor for that. And so if there's um, sentence structures or formatting issues and no matter how good of a writer you are you're going to miss a period here or you're going to put a he instead of a she here like there's there's always going to be something and so that was not a big issue for me and wanting the beta readers to do because they're just reading it to help you improve it not reading it to edit it and show you how to format things like that so beta readers are important after you write your story and you do your self-editing and run it through whatever programs you want to run it through for grammar and sentence structure and things like that. Then you hire, well not hire, then you solicit beta readers. Typically it's free. There are people who charge for it, which has changed over time because it used to just be beta readers were free, period. And so I did solicit free beta reading services. So after I have the feedback from that, which I do, I'm still waiting for one more then I will do an edit based on all of their feedback. Then I will hire a professional editor <laughs> to help me further polish it and then edit after the editor's feedback. <laughs> Let it sit for a little while, a couple weeks to a month, and then read through it again with fresh eyes and see if anything else needs to be polished. And then it will be ready for publication, whether traditionally or self-published which I really feel like is the route that I'm going to go and so that's what I'm going to do and so I just wanted to share this with you um, and also to 
highlight that writing a book is not just writing a book. Like there is all this other stuff <laughs> that you have to do to get your book from your computer out digitally as an ebook or published as a softback or a hardcover book. And even once it comes back from the editor and you do your rewrite, then you have to, you have to make sure your formatting is as it should be for an ebook or for a physical book. And you know, you have to get do your book cover, either hire someone to do it or learn how to do it yourself. And then even for marketing and then once you, and for publishing and it's it's a lot of work. And I don't talk about it often because it's just this constant thing that I do. And since I decided to do an article on the necessity of beta readers, I said, you know what, let me just do a video about it too. Plus I did my makeup today, so I think I'm kinda cute. So <laughs> still a troll but a cute troll nonetheless, right? And so <laughs> If you are a writer, you know, let me know how you're doing in your process and things that you've learned along your journey of writing a book and all the work that goes into um, writing it all the way through to publication. If you are published, I would love to hear, are you self-published? Are you an independent author? Did you go the traditional route through a publishing company? In which case, for those of you who don't know, you have to send out query letters and pitches and it's a lot of work. Either way, it's, it's a lot of work. And so I'm just curious to know what you guys are up to, those of you who are in the writing community. And for those of you who are not, like, what do you think about, like, this whole process that I'm talking about? Like, did you really um, see writing a book as just writing a book and not really think about all the other stuff that goes into getting it out to the masses? And so that's it for this video. And so thank you guys for watching. Any questions, let me know. Comments, leave them below or send them to me through email. My email address is below. And you guys will see me in the next video. Thank you.